So I just want to record this video just to show you how to uh, create holes <clears throat> on a uh, on a surface like 3D surface like this, uh, and doing this on a planar surface like this one is on a C profile. It's more or less straightforward, I think. So uh, what I did here was start with uh, Hole Wizard over here. So as soon as you open it, I uh, do not really start with this with specifying the standard, but rather go to position, and that's how I like to do it. But you can start with the type as well. So uh, in the position tab, um, I just, for example, select the surface I want to start the hole on, in a sense. Um, so if you like look at this area it just says select the face for the hole right so this is the face that I want to uh, that I want my hole to be on so I just select it and then the uh, the uh, note here changed use the dimensions in the sketch tools to define your the position of your hole so it automatically goes to sketch here and then you can use the smart uh, decision etc but first I have to uh, put on put the uh, in place the hole arbitrarily on that surface, right? And then uh, it is like undefined. I can, uh, uh, and a very important thing, uh, as you can see, I placed the uh, one hole and then um, I can place the other one, but I don't want that because I want only one hole and then I'm gonna populate it, right? So using the uh, linear pattern tool. So, uh, to avoid this, I just press escape once, so I press escape, and then I have only one hole here, and then I can just like uh, click on this uh, point and then move this hole around wherever I want, as long as it is on the on that surface that I've chosen initially, and then uh, to define where it should be exactly on the surface on this uh, uh, face, let's say. I'm going to use this dimension, smart dimension tool. Uh, I select, I want to set the <clears throat> distance between this point um, and uh, the, the edge of the surface. So like, just like this, just to be sure, uh, I just like uh, clicked on the line, on the edge, the first edge on that face, on this uh, surface. So uh, let me make it, I don't know, 48 probably. So it's over here, and then the next thing I want to do is uh, uh, so it, it, it has uh, only one degree of freedom left because on this uh, uh, how do you say it's axis, let's say it's defined to be uh, the distance to, is defined to be forty eight, and uh, like on this surface, I mean in this direction, in this direction, it is defined to be on the surface, and finally I had to set the third um, uh, dimension, let's say. Where am I? Okay. Which is gonna be this distance, right? So I'll just click on this thing. And then I wanna s set the distance from this point all the way to the, uh, to this face, or to this surface, let's say, right? This one, yeah. Uh, actually, I tried clicking on the first edge, not the face, uh, and it didn't quite work for me. So I, it kind of ma also makes sense that if you uh, think about this surface as a plane, and I'm just I'm just setting the distance between this plane and this point here, so uh, I can make it equal to 50. So as you can see, that this this dot. Is, has turned black, which means it's fully defined here. Just like um, hit OK, and the hole is there. And actually, I think my that the specification of the hole has been predefined because I already used that function. That's why um, it should be OK. I mean, I mean the 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 diameter and the the length of the hole uh, has been predefined because I used uh, several. Like uh, I actually made previously made made the holes with this specification, so it's right there. I don't know why it's like 
taking too much. Okay, so I have the hole here. And for example, I can remove this or make it invisible. And here we go. Hello. Okay, now uh, to populate this, uh, actually, you know, um, SolidWorks has um, tortured me for two days. And finally, like, I think I can figure, I, I think I can say I, I figured out how to populate this thing. Uh, first, I used, um, what did I use? Uh, yeah, I think this one, the component linear component pattern. I used this one, but it didn't really work. And it makes sense because it populates uh, the, the, uh, a component because in the a whole is not a component. So it doesn't work here. And, and this, uh, it's, let's call it, um, and um, a, uh, how do you call it? And feature here, or an entity, right? Uh, and to populate this, the function is hidden here in the assembly what features, so I guess. So that's where I found this um, linear pattern. Choose this one. And I'm gonna, and the rest is, should be pretty intuitive, I think. So I select the, uh, um, the feature I want to populate here, which is this hole, right? Yeah, 4.3 diameter hole five. And then I want to, uh, I want it to go in this direction, right? Like along the span of the wing or the wing box. And one of the features that actually can, sh can serve as a guiding line is this line, this edge again. I'm using this edge in the direction one field. So there we go. And then, um, okay, we were asked to make it, um, make the holes 40 millimeters apart. And uh, we needed only 10 holes on, uh, on the shell. Here we go. Yeah. And then I just click OK. And that's pretty much it. So it's kind of thinking still. Yeah, it's thinking. Yeah. And uh, the rivets work pretty much the same. You just like uh, use the use the mates to place the rivets here, and then populate them just like the way I did with the holes.